talking about groundwater. We got a lot of support for this from our UPGO team, um, from Base Titanium, which is a mining company that operates in the Grow for Good study area, and of course from the School of Geography through the Inspiration Fund. So we're currently working with three schools. We started by approaching uh, some teachers who then brought the idea to their students, um, and the students really from the get-go uh, took ownership of that idea and they formed clubs that they have consistently been committing after school and weekend hours to. We asked them why they wanted to participate in this. Um, this is an excerpt of what one of the students, Fatuma Khatib, uh, wrote to us. She said that um, she has a desire to learn but also really wants to share that knowledge with her home community and that was something that was echoed by many of the students. So these clubs are really working because of uh, teacher commitment, teacher involvement, and also they're very student driven. So that means that we're continuously asking questions and encouraging them to ask us questions and give us feedback. And through that process, the scope um, of the clubs has grown. So we've widened the focus to include basics of the water cycle and geology, um, and also from hearing from the students about the water related challenges that they and their families face, We've brought in more information on water quality, treatment, conservation, among other things. Um, we've supplied phones and data plans so that we can communicate with the clubs from the UK using WhatsApp. And we started this blog, there's the web address, uh, so that the students can write about some of their activities and share their learning. Um, we've drawn on local partnerships, particularly with Base Titanium, to further support the clubs and um, have really made an effort to let the students speak with researchers and practitioners so that they can get some insight into potential water-related career paths that they might want to explore. And finally, we're really encouraging learning by doing activities and going on field trips. So as pictured here, some of the activities that have been done so far have included group concept mapping, um, for the students to learn from each other and also to give us an idea about what they already know and where there are gaps in their understanding. Um, they've done some ex exercises with aquifer model kits to learn about how groundwater is stored and moves in the ground um, and how contamination can spread. They visited the mine site to learn a bit about industrial water management and some of them were actually able to see a borehole being drilled. Um, they've done water quality testing of different sources and also to test the effectiveness of um, a ceramic water filter that actually one of the teachers had developed. Um, and each of the clubs installed rain gauges at their schools and have learned how to collect, collect the rainfall data from those. So now I'll hand over to Nancy and she's going to talk a bit more about the ongoing work. Thanks, Saskia. So we're also using a project-based learning approach to help students practice real-world skills like planning, problem-solving and communications. So students at one school have divided themselves into small groups and each group has chosen a topic to explore and this is the list of the topics that they've come up with. Some of the projects will be based on students doing their own research. Um, for example, one group will be presenting on um, water conservation in farming and another is looking into health effects of water pollution. Um, other projects will involve practical demonstrations, such as one group that's planning to build a model water filter. And we're arranging an event next year when students can show their projects to the head teachers and to Kenyan researchers from, from the Kenyan universities and local officials from the Ministry of Education. Um, the students only have internet access once or twice a week on the club phone, so the ongoing challenge is to provide enough resources that are targeted at the right level so that they can do their own research into all these topics. Um, and we've been developing a resource pack backed up with an online document library of background materials that have been printed out for the students to use. Um, so this is the second draft of the student resource which has been reviewed by club members, by the teachers involved in the club and by the Grow for Good project researchers. And now we're now addressing all their comments and are adding activities for each module. And we're also including ideas for practical projects that the schools could do, for example, water conservation methods that they could try out in their school vegetable plots. So the big question now is where should we go from here? So we're looking for ways to maximise the legacy of what we've achieved this year with the clubs. Um, but we also need to encourage schools to sustain the clubs once the project fieldwork in the area it ends. And ideally we'd also like to scale this up in a sustainable way so we can get more secondary students in Kenya to learn about these topics. And a key step in this will be to develop an educator's guide to go with the student booklet. 
um, to describe the teachers' roles and what would be needed to run particular activities. Um, and we'll also need a way to disseminate the resources and to encourage and support schools that want to join in. So ideas we're exploring include developing a website where water experts and educators in Kenya can sign up and volunteer to deliver water champion activities in schools. And we're also thinking about whether how we could continue um, to use the WhatsApp connections to enable a role for um, people with water expertise who aren't based in Kenya so that they could guide the clubs or respond to student questions in some way. And we've got, okay, we've got some networks that we've identified that could help with this, for example, the Pan-African Conservation Education Project. Um, and we're also looking for partner organisations in Kenya that might be able to help to support the teachers. Um, one approach we're looking at is to link up with digital education providers to promote project-based learning about water, at the same time as helping students to develop their computer skills. Um, and we've been experimenting with this in the existing clubs because many of the students have said that they're very keen to, to use computers to prepare their projects. Um, and we were able to get some laptops from a UK charity called IT Schools Africa, which the research team have kindly carried out to Kenya ready for the students to use next term. So thank you very much to the research team for all your support with this project and thanks to the Inspiration Fund and we'd be delighted to have any feedback on the project. Thanks. Thank you very much. I feel very inspired by these talks. Um, I think they're wonderful. I really like that. If you think education is expensive, <coughs> try ignorance. That's fantastic. Um, next up is the only man from Spain that I know who doesn't like hot places. And therefore, uh, Mark decided to apply to the Inspiration Fund to set up something that's actually notably lacking in Oxford, which is a way of networking people working in polar regions. Mark. 